Things go wrong all the time. Whether it's trying through the file and finding it doesn't exist, or trying to download some data from the internet only for the network to go down, or who knows what. Now, if we don't handle errors like these gracefully, our app will just go pop. It'll just crash. So Swift forces us to think about them, or at least acknowledge that they exist. This takes three steps. Step one, define all the errors that might happen in the code we're writing. Step two, write a function that works as normal, but can throw one or more of those errors if a serious problem is found. Then step three, try and run that function and handle any errors that come back. Now I wanna work through a complete example here. If the user asks us to check the strength of their password, we'll return how good it is. Okay, good, excellent, whatever. But if it's really bad, if it's too short or really obvious, we'll flag up a serious fatal error, please fix it. So step one, we want to define the kinds of problems that can occur inside our function. So we're gonna say there's a new enum building on Swift's built-in error type. This has two cases, short and obvious. Password's too short or password's too obvious, those are two errors. And honestly, it doesn't define anything about what those two mean. They mean nothing. They just exist. There is a password error called short and a password error called obvious. Step two is to write a function that will trigger one or more of those errors. Now, when an error is triggered, or as we say in Swift, uh, thrown, we're saying something fatal has gone wrong in the function. We cannot continue. Do not continue as normal. Don't try and send back a value. Just immediately terminate and throw up the error to be handled somewhere else. In our case, we're gonna write a function that checks the strength of a password. It'll say, I mean, if it's really bad, fewer than five characters, for example, we'll throw an error immediately. If it's extremely well known, we'll throw the obvious error. But otherwise, we'll return okay, good, or excellent ratings, depending on how the user's strength is. Here's how it looks in Swift. First up, we'll say func chess pa password, password string, return string. But notice that throws keyword before the return type. We'll then say for less than five characters, it's too short. If it's one, two, three, four, five, the same password I have in my luggage, though it's obvious. Otherwise, do various checks. Shorter than eight characters, it's okay. Shorter than 10, it's good. Otherwise, it's excellent. Let's break that down to smaller bits. If a function is able to throw errors, we must mark it with throws the throws keyword before the return type. We do not specify the kinds of errors that can be thrown. We don't say it throws a password error, just that it can throw errors. Now being marked with throws means it can throw errors, not that it must throw errors. It could happen if things go wrong, but it might not. It might also work perfectly. In fact, we hope it does work perfectly, right? The happy path through this is it's, it's all working great. When it comes time to throw errors, like in those first two lines of code, we say throw followed by one of our errors, password error dot short or dot obvious or whatever. This will immediately exit the function. It will not return a string. It'll not run any of the further code. It'll exit immediately to be handled somewhere else. Now I've put the uh, if password count less than five throw short all on one line, just for space reasons on my slide here, right? Ideally, you don't write code quite so compressed, but there's not a lot of space on one screen. If no errors are thrown, those first two lines pass nicely. We go to the next chunk and work as normal. It must return a string. We promise it will return a string. It needs to return a string. And that completes the second step of throwing errors. We've defined the errors that might happen. First step, then wrote a function using those errors. Second step. Now the final step is to run the function and handle any errors that might occur. Now, Swift's playgrounds in Xcode are pretty lax about handling errors. 
They're mostly meant for learning. Uh, but when it comes to writing real Swift and Swift UI projects, they'll complain bitterly. They'll make sure you handle errors properly. And that means doing three smaller steps. First up, start a block of code that might throw errors by saying do an open brace. Then call one or more throwing functions by saying try. Then have a catch block to handle any errors that come back. Now in pseudocode, not real Swift, they haven't got this function yet, it looks like this. Do, try some risky work, catch, print handle errors here. Of course, you wanna have a some risky work function doing real work, but you get the idea. We say do all our throwing code, try this, try that, try something else, then catch the errors that come back. Let's try it out in Xcode with our real function. Here's our check password right now. I'll say let string equals one, two, three, four, five. Then we'll do a do. We'll say let result equals try check password with that string. And then print password rating is result. Now I've got to catch the errors here. I'll just say print there was an error like that. I press play, boom, there was an error, comes back correctly. Now, what matters here is if the check password function runs successfully, if it all works correctly, it'll return a value back into result and then carry on running the next line of code in the do block, which in this case, we'll print it out. But if any errors are thrown, this whole do block ends. It'll jump straight to the catch block. Here, where it'll say there was an error. Now, there are a few different parts of this that really deserve, deserve more discussion, but I wanna focus on the most important one, which is here, try. This must be written before all throwing functions as a signal to yourself and other developers that regular code execution might stop here. It might get to here and get no further because an error is thrown and it'll jump down to the catch block. Now, when you use try like this, you gotta be inside a do block and handle the errors inside the catch blocks. In some circumstances, a handful of circumstances, you can write a different version of try, which is try exclamation mark, which does not require do or catch. What it means is, I think this function is safe to throw with no errors. And if you're wrong, in this case I am wrong, uh, you're risking a very fatal error here. This is what's a, is an actual full-on crash here. Um, so you've got to be really, really sure. And in practice, that's actually fairly rare. There are a handful of places I would do it personally, but nearly always I would not. I would make sure I use a regular try and do a do block like that instead and catch the errors carefully. So be careful around that. You wanna know it exists, but broadly speaking, you don't wanna do it. When it comes to catching errors down here, you always have to have this catch block to handle every kind of error. Remember, we don't know what check password's going to throw. We can see it's a password error, but we're not saying that the way the function is defined. And so Swift will say it could be anything at all. You can, if you want to, look for particular errors. So you can do custom messages. For example, I might say, I want a dedicated catch block for password error dot short. And this will do print, uh, please use a longer password. Then we'll say uh, catch password error dot obvious. Print, I have the same combination on my luggage. And then, this uh, catch all at the end, sometimes comically called a Pokemon catch because you've got to catch them all, got to catch all errors. Um, I'll press play now and it'll be run by and, and it'll jump to this catch block. That's the one that was actually thrown and it'll be put in here instead. As you progress, you're gonna see how throwing functions are baked into so many of Apple's frameworks. So even though you might not make them yourself, having your own you know, throwing function like this, 
you at least need to know how to use them. It does matter. I would say uh, most of Apple's own errors that get thrown do have a meaningful error message you could show to users if you wanted to, to provide some context, or at least put it into a log file somewhere. Uh, Swift automatically makes this available to us in an error constant, and it's common to read that uh, inside your prints or logs, whatever you want to. I could say print there was an error, error, and in particular, you want to look for dot localized description, which is the description of what went wrong in you know, plain language that you can understand. Uh, it won't have one here because it's our own errors, obvious and short, um, but Apple's own ones will have meaningful localized descriptions you can work with. If I temporarily take out my other catch blocks, it'll run this last one automatically, and I'll print out the operation couldn't be completed. A generic error message, we haven't got a localized one ourselves.